The day is Friday, the date is the 23rd, the month is November and the time is 9 p.m. East African time. A very good evening to you and thank you for tuning into Brand Plus TV. It's always a delight knowing that you have taken your time and are keeping us company. I am Ndiro Ganga, ready to bring you up to speed with all the top stories making headlines. And as you know, we're all about business. Here's a glance of some of those stories. We have been working hard to operationalize um, um, uh, what you call a common market. Jua Kalingovukazi exhibition media briefing, United in Purpose. And therefore create one. The signing of the free trade agreement which happened in Rwanda, most of you are aware. Youth and the Blue Economy pre-conference, diving deep for the gold. It gets to be acknowledged as a... So overall, the business, uh, this is a culmination of... Longhorn Publishers PLC AGM 2018, judging the book by the numbers. Thank you for staying with us now on to our top story. The Ministry of the East African Community, in conjunction with the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Cooperative State Department of Trade, today held a press briefing ahead of the 19th edition of the Juakali Nguvukazi exhibition. The event will be held from the 2nd to the 10th of December in Eldoret. Take a look. In a way, every SME, whether you're Speaking during the media briefing, PA State Department of Trade Dr. Chris Kipto noted that the government is willing to support the sector by expanding the regional market. In the context of the fact that we have made good progress, as you have heard PS say, that we have moved from a customs union for five years, we have been working hard to operationalize a, 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 what you call a common market, and a lot of work has been done on that. And now there are discussions around a monetary union where you talk even of a single currency. They will all showcase. Susan Koech, PSEAC, reiterated the words of the PS, stating the main objective of the exhibition is to open up the market by promoting regional integration. One, to promote dialogue amongst all the uh, regional entrepreneurs. Number two is also to be a platform for investors to invest in the MSME sector. Number three is to promote regional integration because all the partner states will be uh, taking part in this event. And then of course, in addition, is also to recognize uh, the importance of the MSME sector. We all know that the MSME sector is very important for our economies, for all the East African economies, and even more so for Kenya. It is a catalyst to the um, Big Four agenda on manufacturing. And, and so we all must be able to really embrace this uh, event and I'm urging that all Kenyans should make an effort of ensuring they take part in one way or another uh, in, in the uh, forthcoming event. Peter B. Watt, CEO Export Promotion Council, went ahead to point out that several issues will be addressed during the exhibition, among them capacity building and access to information, all in an effort to grow the Juakali industry. Issues of access to finance will be discussed, uh, issues of access to trade information, uh, issues of capacity building because, you know, we need to build capacity of SMEs, especially in the area of uh, property rights, area of research, market information, area of business to business, and of course market access uh, through you know, trade fairs and exhibitions uh, so that they can be able to learn the art of you know, showcasing their products. And then the question of aggregation, you know, bringing small traders or small business uh, people to come together and put you know, aggregation uh, infrastructure so that we can be able to meet global demands because you realize that sometimes when we get orders, they are large, so we have to bring uh, these entrepreneurs together. Of course, the encouragement of working together uh, through cooperative movement, 
and also subcontracting opportunities. How can you be able to link up with large enterprises and supply them as uh, you seek to uh, trade across borders? It is likely to erode. The exhibition so far has attracted 1,335 exhibitors. Out of the targeted 1,500, Tanzania leads the list of exhibitors with 237, followed by Uganda with 160, Burundi stands at 70, and finally Rwanda at 51. Yes. The Youth Congress Canadian High Commission and the UN Habitat have today hosted a pre-conference on youth and the blue economy ahead of the global summit to be held in Nairobi starting Monday next week. The pre-conference focused on opportunities for the youth in the blue economy to advance the attainment of sustainable development goals. Our reporter Daisy Ombo attended the ceremony and filed the following report. The agenda of the pre-conference is to promote the inclusion of the youth in decision-making, more in particular in projects that have a direct impact on them and future generations. Speaking during the conference, Principal Secretary, Minister of Public Service, Youth and Gender Affairs, Dr. Francis Otieno, outlined the government's plan to support the youth in the maritime sector. We'll continue to develop and build capacity for the youth in the maritime sector. This entails educating and motivating the youth to get into the study of maritime domain that in turn will ultimately increase the output value of the industry. The government will further foster development of partnerships to facilitate capacity building of youth and financing youth innovations, stroke enterprises, for economic purposes and sustainable management of these water bodies, water bodies resources. Thank you so much. Let me see that. Sid Chatterjee, United Nations Resident Coordinator, spoke on the transformational benefits that the country and region will reap from the blue economy. Take reason number one. The signing of the free trade agreement which happened in Rwanda. Most of you are aware. The African Union came together. Some countries have opted in. Some countries have opted out. But gradually... Africa is going to be the future European Union model, and that's what this whole free trade agreement is premised on, which means the free movement of goods, services, and people. For the free movement of goods, services, and people, you need ports, and that is how ships or goods and supplies will come to these ports. Now, then you need the infrastructure to take these goods and supplies from the ports to the cities, and it's not just it's not just Nairobi, but to Rwanda and to Ethiopia and to many other parts which are landlocked. So the landlocked countries also have a stake in a blue economy. It's about the rivers. It's about the lakes. It's all about the lake, you know, Lake Victoria, which goes all the way through Tanzania, Kenya, and Uganda, totally unexploited. It's about the offshore and onshore potential of fisheries, of sericulture, of aquaculture with the level of contamination and pollution that we are seeing in the oceans, this is the time for the blue economy to look at not just conservation of the oceans, but the potential of transforming those oceans. But clearly, we also need to have sericulture and aquaculture which is on land. Because of the level of pollution, you probably have to go a lot of the fish and, 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 and fish stock on land. So the it's just unparalleled. It is the sky is the limit, and and you know if people consider the sky the limit, then they are still being modest in their aspirations. Easy organizing and trying to on the opportunities that the youth can benefit from. He had this to say: It's a juggernaut which is being unleashed, ladies and gentlemen, and you're a part of that because the young people are needed for everything from ports to offshore to sericulture to aquaculture to agriculture. That's where the largest employment opportunities are going to be. That is where the largest opportunities for entrepreneurship is going to be. The representative of Ambassador Monica Juma, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador E. M. Barin, stated why His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta's nomination by the United Nations as the global champion for youth empowerment mattered. During his... Uh uh, tours around the country, his biggest agenda is how do we begin to work and move the youth from where we are. For reasons that the challenges that we are faced today, 
needs some very extraordinary thinking and extraordinary action to be able to bring the youth to take their rightful space in the global economy. The outcomes of the pre-conference will see the development of a position paper on youth initiatives and work in the blue economy for conservation and livelihoods, which shall then be presented to the Sustainable Blue Economy Conference Secretariat and other stakeholders. Reporting for Brown Plus TV Business News, I am Daisy Wambua. Longhorn Publishers has today released results for its 2018 financial year ending 30th June. This was done during their annual general meeting held at Serena Hotel in Nairobi. Take a look. We came and uh, mentioned to you that the business was facing several challenges. Longhorn Publishers in 2018 recorded a total turnover of 1.7 billion Kenya shillings, which is a 17% growth turnover compared to same period previous year. The publisher during the same period realized 183 million Kenya shillings in profit after tax, a 2% rise in gross margin percentage from 52% to 54%. While addressing the media after the event, Maxwell Wahome, incoming group managing director, attributed the growth and profit to a three-year strategy that the publishing house has adopted. This is a culmination of a three-year strategy that started back in 2015, where we started to focus on, on two key things. One was uh, regional diversification, so where we er entered into new markets and tried to grow our presence within the region. The second one was product diversification, where we added the basket of products that we're offering our market. This was in realization of the fact that relying on one product would leave us vulnerable to the various shocks in the market. So we've been successful at that and uh, now we've now started a new journey that will take us from 2018 to 2021, a new strategic plan that will now focus on key pillars of digital growth and further entrenching ourselves uh, in the regional markets. However, amidst the good news, the total operating expense was noted to have gone up by 9%. Wahome attributed this to high content development and borrowing rates. In order to drive the growth in the business, we have to invest in new products. Longhorn is a content developer, so we have developed content for the new curriculum, so we had to get funding from the market in order to, uh, to, to develop the respective products. But our borrowings are short-term in nature, six to nine months, where if you had seen the, the, uh, the progress after that, our borrowing levels have already gone down significantly. So it's just at a point in time it was high, and that was the result of, that's what caused the high finance cost. Wahome went ahead to note that the publishing house is keen on repurposing their content to suit the current market trends and feed into the diversified audience. Content is king in this business. We've developed content for over 40 years, but that content was mostly available in form of a book. So now what we're doing is looking at the key, the key trends in the market and trying to repurpose our content to fit in the, the behaviors of our customers. One of our set books, Blossom of the Savannah, will soon be available as a 52-part episode on TV next couple of months. That's how we've repurposed the content that we've already developed and now making it available in TV, in our screens, video on demand. The same product is now available in audio version. We now have an audio book, which you can access it uh, on Audible. That's an Amazon product. So we've looked at our content and repurposed it to fit in the lifestyles of the ordinary Kenyan or the ordinary uh, Monanchi. When you look at the products that we are now availing in mobile platforms, it's content, Kiswahili content that we've developed for so many years. Now making it available as a medali on your phone or Amsemo or Nahau, that is a way of stimulating people's minds and using the same content and appreciating the key trends that are, uh, that are happening in the market. As the publishing industry continues to face stiff competition from other content creators and distributors, it is paramount that they find the perfect balance between their current offerings and the market needs if they are to keep their numbers in the green.
Well, on that positive note, let us head for a short commercial break. But do stay with us as we still have so much more lined up for you on the other side, including some theatre and performing arts. Stay with us. Well, we wish the nominees all the best. Now, let's shift gears and take a look at other matters. The Netherlands Embassy has today organized a workshop for various incubators in the country in an effort to empower them with tools to better serve the businesses they incubate. Karen Boothman from the Knowledge Centre Kenya stated the need to shift to the circular economy, a new business model that focuses more on the take make waste that translates to future proof businesses that encompasses people planet and profit. Take a look. It's necessary that we have a shift, but we see in general that there is a historic global business culture shift at the moment. Because if you ignore it, you will not be future proof. And the reasons we're saying it is what you already mentioned. There are not enough resources to do what we're doing, the way we're doing it for the next coming 10 years. It's not possible. Future proof businesses is all about people, planet and profit. And then not only how you take care of them, but also what Lisbeth was saying. That means also that you have to think what people need. How does your market operate? So it's not only how you take care of them and how you impact them, but you, you really have a future-proof mindset. So you always look beyond. You look very critically beyond. Well, let's take a look at how the markets performed today. Here is a summary. Well, that is just a summary of how the markets performed, but for more in-depth analysis of the same, tune in Monday morning at 8 a.m. for my next Big Bet with Rachel Deritu and Karanja Daniel. Well, looking to travel this weekend, here is the weather report. Well, that was all we had for you on the business news desk tonight. On behalf of everyone that made it a success, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again on Monday, same place, same time. But until then, think business, culture, and lifestyle. Have a good night. I'm Andrew Ganga.